good books on it. It's really hard finding stuff on yeah. the Crusades. It, there, anything where I mean, European men people, aren't, you know? aren't the good guys or aren't doing really well suddenly gets, yeah. well, oh, I can't know. find anything. <laughs> yeah, once, one, oh, Crimes Against Humanity by white guys. No, 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 shh. <laughs> that didn't happen. You, um, there well, were, there was, now I don't know if this is true, but a student who's a film student told me that the original screenplay for um, Kingdom of Heaven had no good crusaders in it. And when Hollywood got a hold of this, uh, is this true? Do you know? No, it sounds true. It, when, when Hollywood got a hold of it, they created Jeremy Irons' character. So Jeremy Irons' character ha is not a historical character. They just made him up so they could have one good crusader. And then they rewrote... Um, yeah, he always, he always. Yeah, okay. Mission, he was so wonderful. Oh, I love that guy. Um, they, they rewrote Ibeline of Balian's role. And they, you know, the, he's like some random guy who gets sort of pulled off. He was born in Palestine. He was like a second generation crusader. Like, he wasn't some random blacksmith in Germany somewhere. And you know, like they have him accidentally have this love affair with, I can't remember, Ava Green is the actress. I can't remember the name of the, the, the person she's playing. But that actually happened because he was plotting with her to get rid of <laughs> the king. You know, like it, it, they made it innocent when the reality is they're just backstabbing bastards all. And, you know, they did, they did try to show... The funniest scene ever in that movie is everybody's like kind of starving and it's desert. And Ibeline, who's played by Legolas, uh, <laughs> that's his best role ever. Uh, he should have never played any other role, just Legolas. Um, he suddenly goes and gets a shovel and starts digging a hole. And he digs them a well. The Arabs invented modern agriculture. They're the guys who figured out crop rotation. They're the guys who created the sugar industry, the coffee industry. They're the first country on earth to pack a ship full of ice and then put fresh food in it and send it overseas to another country. They're the, they're the guys who hybridized pl plants, who built the world's first irrigation dams. They're the guys who invented hydraulic pumps so you could pump water out to far off places. I mean, he, he taught them to build a well. Like it's the most absurd scene ever. Like I burst out laughing and of course, People in the theater are like, why is he laughing? That's not funny. <laughs> White guy showing brown people how to do things. Um, that's wonderful. See how good we are. So there were, there were four, there, were, there was probably nine or 10 officially dated or officially numbered crusades. The first three got to the Middle East. The fourth one conquered Constantinople, which I think is hysterical. The first one is the one who cap that captures Jerusalem. Uh, they, it takes them two years to get to Jerusalem, and then they capture it a year later. Um, the second one is a reinforcement crusade. It's just to send reinforcements. And the third one is to recapture Jerusalem because they lost it. Um, the reason they lose it is what the story of the movie Kingdom of Heaven is about. Actually, when I left the movie theater, I turned to a friend and I went, okay, I can't wait for the movie that shows Nazis as good guys. And sure enough, Downfall <laughs> came out of, uh, like a year or two later. And Downfall is about the last month in um, Nazi Germany. It's about April of 1945. And there is a character who is a SS doctor who's clearly a good guy, but he's also SS. And ironically enough, the actor who plays him is Jewish. Uh, so <laughs> and, and, and this movie is set in Russia because it's, St. Petersburg is the last large German architecture built city that's still intact because it didn't get bombed out of existence in World War II. Um, the, what happens in the movie, of course, is the, 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 the kind of crazy crusaders, because they had crazy crusaders and not crazy crusaders, which is weird to be like crazy ISIL and not crazy ISIL. Uh, I just, what? It doesn't make sense. The crazy crusaders in the movie keep wanting, and they're the Knights Templar because they're always portrayed as being over the top crazy. Um, they, they, they keep trying to pick a fight with the Arabs, which actually was happening. They, they kept doing it. And finally, they did actually capture Salahuddin's sister, 
and they gang raped her and murdered her. And so I went, fine, I'm killing you. <laughs> you. You got me going. Thanks for doing that to my sister. Um, and he, he beats them at the Battle of Hatton in 1187. And the irony of this is the, his Ar Arab armies were democratic. And so even though Salah Adin is in charge, he's the general in charge, he still has to deal with what his soldiers vote for. And they, after the battle, they've got all these crusader prisoners, they vote to kill all of them. And Salah Adin goes, no, that's not us, that's them. We will never be them, right? The tolerance intolerance thing. That's what they would do to us now. And we don't do that. And uh, the, the soldiers are like, we don't care. We've been fighting these crusaders for almost 100 years now. Uh, 90 years, we're sick of them, we have to punish them, we have to hurt them. And um, he goes, has to negotiate with his own army, and they go back and forth. Here's what they come up with. They, they will only kill, they will only execute the Knights Templars and the Knights Hospitallers, who were the fanatic uh, warrior monks who took vows of chastity and poverty and were extremely filthy rich and founded the banks in Switzerland. Um, <laughs> Maybe. Oh. <laughs> I don't really know. I just, right, this is the story that okay. seems to be, it could be, yeah. Some people, some people think, and some people think they became right. the bankers of Switzerland. Some people think they became the Masons of Scotland. The, 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 the <laughs> truth is in there somewhere. Um, so uh, they line up the Templars and the Hospitallers for execution, and Saladin still doesn't want to do this. So he has guys who speak Latin. Arabs who speak Latin walk up and down the lines going, hey, we can't execute Muslims. We can't execute Muslims. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. <laughs> and so when the guys, when the crusaders, the Templars and hospitals would get to the executioner, they would immediately convert on the spot. And they're, all right, fine. And they put them into the Mamluk armies, which were these slave armies. So they got turned into slave warriors, but they didn't get executed. And we think, we don't really know, but we think about three quarters of the Templars and Hospitals converted that day. <laughs> the weird thing was, there were a bunch of Crusaders who weren't Templars or Hospitals who started volunteering that they were. And so maybe another 10% the number of Hospitals and Templars who were scheduled for execution who didn't get executed end up showing up and they're like, we're Templars. And the Arabs are like, you don't get it, right? That's not a food line. <laughs> <laughs> that ends badly at the end. You don't want to get in this line. And they're like, no, we do, because if we die this way, we're going straight to heaven. And they actually lied about who they were so that they could be martyred like this. Um, then Salah Hadin went to Jerusalem. And, and of course, Ibelin of Balian ends up in command of the defenses of Jerusalem. And he's, you know, hunkered down and trying to hold the city. And the, uh, the Arabs keep attacking and they, they're having a hard time getting it. And finally, uh, they create a breach in the wall, which is depicted in the movie. And then Salahuddin and Ibelin of Balian get together and they negotiate a, a surrender. And um, again, Salahuddin is stuck negotiating with his men. He's like, they want to enslave every, all the crusaders. They want to take all of them into slavery. He's like, ah, oh, again, that's not us, that's them. You know, this isn't okay. They negotiate back and forth. Finally, they come up with, I, I forget the number, but they came up with something like a quarter of them will be enslaved, but if they have the money, they can buy their freedom. So Salah Hedin goes, okay, so this is the deal. We're gonna enslave 20% of you, a quarter of you, whatever the number was. But if you have the money, we can free you. You can buy your freedom. And Evelyn's like, okay, that's, thanks. We surrender. And Salah Hedin goes, no, no, no. I'm going to give you guys 48 hours to sort this out. And Ibelin goes, what's the point? We'll surrender right now. Because if you have the gold, you can buy your freedom. And Ibelin's like, I, I don't get it. <sighs> Plunder the city. Plunder your own city so that you can free your crusaders. So he has to explain it to him. So that's not the movie. He plunders Jerusalem in the 48 hours he has. They come out, they, they put the gold out, and they count it up, 
and they don't have enough. They have like enough to do half of the crusaders that are going to be enslaved. The other half are still going to have to be enslaved. And so Haydn goes, that's it? That's all the gold? You've been here for almost a century and this is all you've accumulated? You guys are incompetent. We should have conquered you a long time ago. And then he, Saladin walks off. He goes into his own tent, pulls out his own coffer, his own gold chest, walks over and drops it and goes, add this to frame these dumbasses. <laughs> And when this happens, uh, the, his, a bunch of his generals are like, all right. And they go empty their own coffers. And by the time they're done, they end up enslaving like 5% of the crusaders. But you know, after Saladin bankrupts himself. And, and this, is, this is how they cut. So you know, like the, the stark contrast of fighting their anger for the abuse that they had, but the, and still trying to be human and get through this somehow. Um, I, I find really fascinating because you can see the intolerance seeping in and the anger seeping in. And then, of course, the Crusades don't get, quit. This isn't the end. They, the Crusader states will function in some way, shape, or form for the next 104 years. Um, they finally fizzle. Every historian gives you a slightly different date, but somewhere around 1291. Having said that, there's an organization that's an observer member of the United Nations. They have the, almost the same status that the Palestinians have. It's just observer status. They're not voting members. It's called Sovereign Military Order of Malta. It's not Malta. That's a different thing. There's a Republic of Malta. This is the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. It's the Crusaders. The Crusaders actually have UN observer status. They're st and they're still around. And they're, they're still banking on getting Jerusalem someday. Uh, so, in case you're wondering where they went. <laughs> I wonder how you become one. Like, do you... Use, <laughs> like, do you... I'm sure it's through the Catholic Church somehow. There's, there's got to be, but I just... Like, I, I'd like to volunteer. And then do you get a salary? <laughs> this could be an interesting gig. You obviously have to have some kind of military training or experience. Um, and then the rest of the Crusades were the, like the Baltic states, which, why? And then there was one to Malta, and Malta, Malta, you, know, you go there, they speak Arabic, but they write in Latin letters and they're all fanatic Catholics. And you know, their, their flag is a cross, but the language they're speaking is Arabic with hints of Italian mixed in there, but it's really just Arabic. And so it's sort of a strange place because it's got this strange crusader history.